I welcome you all to today's uh, session uh, wherein we will be discussing the topic ERPV which stands for equation, ratio, proportion and variation. So, there are four different uh, areas that we will be not covering all of them today itself, we right? will be covering over series of videos. Right? So, thus uh, please ensure that right, you watch the video in its entirety right? in order to understand the concepts, right? the tricks that we will be discussing in several of our videos right? uh, and uh, do not forget to subscribe right, us right? because uh, uh, we will be releasing several other videos uh, in sequence. Right? For example, right now we have the first concept and likewise we will have several other videos wherein we cover the subsequent concepts that comes up in the topic ERPV and other topics. Right? Uh, also for greater learning, right, please ensure that you visit our nearest center right, closest to you, right? uh, particularly if you are interested in cracking CAT or any other uh, uh, competitive exam. Right? Please go there, check what's, what courses are running right, and which course would be suited for you right? because these days the skills that we are going to learn in this video will be useful in almost all the exams that you have to come across. Right? So, just keep that in mind right? and uh, we at time, right, we are the uh, national leaders right, with respect to the CAT aspirants right, particularly and uh, we had always had the highest number of uh, uh, audited results, right, highest number of call getters, final converts. Right? Uh, so, just remember that right? and uh, let us get started with the session today. So, in today's class, uh, in today's video, I would like to keep it very, very light, right? Uh, since this is the very first topic that we have, the topic is simple equations. We will not be going too deep, we will not be covering a lot of ground today. We will just try to limit ourselves to only covering two things basically. One is how do we frame equation, second is how do we solve equation, right? Because these two are essential ingredients of any simple equations class. Right? How do I frame it? How do I solve it? Right? So, when you come to simple equations, so I am sure that you are all aware of what exactly an equation looks like. Right? So, for example, if you take something like Ax plus By is equal to C. So, in this equation we say X and Y are the variables and A, B and C are the constants. A and B are called as coefficients, C is called as a constant value this is the equality sign right and besides these there is also this degree term which is involved it is a linear equation right now degree is 1. As I said we will not get into too much details about it today I just want to focus on two things framing and solving right because uh, framing itself sometimes is a really really complicated task. For example, how do I convert a language statement given to me all right which is in English pure English into mathematics. That would be a challenge sometimes, particularly when the language used is very complicated. For example, for example, if the statement goes like this, the time right now, the time currently is t minutes after 2 pm and the time after half an hour the time after half an hour is going to be 3t minutes before 8. So, time right now is this, time after half an hour is this. So, how do I frame the equation in this case? Right? How do I frame the equation? Because right now it is in the form of plain language or numbers, words are used, sentences are used to provide you with information. But your task does not end at it, reading it you will have to convert this into some form of equation involving variables, constants and all. And finally, after you frame the equation, your job will also entail solving it. And only then you can say that your job is complete. Right? So, that means there are two essential parts as I see here, framing the equation and also then solving the equation. We are not going to do this question per se as of now, but I just wanted to impress upon you that framing and solving go hand, go hand in hand. The questions are not going to be like this, solve for x. The questions are not going to be like this. They are definitely not like this because in your competitive exams like CAT and others, right, you will have the ad additional responsibility of framing the equation also yourself. Right? So, let us try to focus on that 
in this video and let us start by taking up this particular question what I would suggest you all to do is pause the video at this moment try out this question yourself take one or two minutes time try it out and then resume watching the video but here in the video I will just continue with the discussion so the question is if phi x minus y minus phi z so this is an equation involving three variables is equal to 18 and 3x plus 2y minus 3z equal to 16 again another equation involving three variables then find the value of x minus y minus z please understand he is not asking you to find the value of x or y or z he is asking you to find a combination of the variables x minus y minus z he says now looking at the equations and the way in which they are structured can we write the first equation as phi into x minus z i am taking phi common minus y is 18 and second equation again can i take 3 common is 16 now let us do one more thing let us call this x minus z as some other variable k so this equation changes to phi k minus y equal to 18 and this will be 3 k plus 2 y equal to 16 let us try to eliminate y here so let us multiply the first equation by 2 entirely and add the two equations when you do that 2 into phi 10 plus 3 13 k 2 into minus 1 minus 2 y plus 2 y cancels out 2 into 18 is 36 36 and 16 is 52 if 13 k is 52 we can say k will be equal to 52 by 13 which is 4 will be 4 so we got the value of k now we can substitute it back in either of the two equations we can get the value of y also we know this process i am sure see the first question that i have asked you is a solving based question right here the equations are already given to you so that additional responsibility was not there so when you substitute it back k the value of k you will get 3 into 4 12 plus 2 y is equal to 16 so you will get the value of y as 2 so once you get k and y if you look at the question asked can i rewrite this as x minus y z minus y x minus z we put it as k so the answer is nothing but this k minus y what is k 4 y 2 so my answer will be finally 2 so the answer for x minus y minus z will be 2 right so basically the question that we have taken up here involved of course solving of the variables but please understand we cannot solve for the value of each variable individually we cannot find x or y or z we can find this particular combination see had the question been this find x we cannot really answer because we only know x minus y x minus z is 4 we do not know the value of x okay so i hope we are clear with this question so this is with respect to solving the equation now let us take up one more example for this video wherein we will be covering framing part also which is I would say even more important than actually solving it of course solving is the thing that will give you that will fetch you marks but uh, uh, solving will be definitely incorrect if your framing goes wrong right so thus you need to focus on uh, framing the right kind of equations also so for that I have taken up one question you can just give it this question a read pause it take 3-4 minutes time try to solve it on your own and then we shall discuss it but in the class I will just continue with the discussion right. let us read the question together it says a shopkeeper sold a certain number of identical toys the number of toys sold as well as the price of each toy in rupees were two digit numbers by mistake he reversed the digits of both the number of toys he sold and the price of each toy as a result he found that his stock at the end of the day showed 81 items more than it actually was find the actual number of toys sold now please understand one thing uh, focus on the last part here as a result he found that focus on this part what does it mean 
he found that his stock at the end of the day showed showed 81 items more than it actually was. Now, why is it showing 81 items more? Why is there a mistake? Because his inputs were wrong. Because somewhere in the question he said the sales were reported as reverse digits. For example, if the sales was 27, he wrote it as 72 or vice versa. If the sales was 72, he wrote it as 27, right. So, he made a mistake there. <clears throat> On account of that mistake, all right, this error is also creeping in, right. The system is showing 81 items more, whereas there are no extra items. So, what do we infer from this is, so to better understand it, let us make use of this numbers. Please notice, let us say at the start of the day, the shopkeeper had 100 toys, right. During the day, he sold some, let us say, uh, I am just taking a random number, uh, let us say some 63 toys. He sold 60, actually he sold 63 toys. So, that means the stock at the end of the day should have shown how much? 100 minus 63 sold, 37 still remaining in stock. This is what should have actually shown, been shown on the computer. But what is happening? He made a mistake here. So, instead of reporting 63 sales, he is reporting 36 sales. So, if it is 33, can I say the stock left in the go down still will be 100 minus 36 which is 64. So, as you can see, the stock is showing more items than what it actually is. Actually, there are only 37 toys, but the stock due to this error is showing 64 items. How many items more? It is showing 64 minus 37, 27 more. And why is this difference of 27? Because your sales, you have reported it as 27 less. It was 63, you have reported as 36, 27 less, thus your stock is showing 27 more. So, the point I want you all to understand is, whatever is the difference in the stock shown is same as the difference in the sales reported and the actual sales. The value that you report to the system and the actual sales that is happening. Difference between these two is same as difference between these two. I hope that is also clear. So, after this point is clear, I would like to enter the question that we have here. Right? Uh, he says that the number of toys sold was a two digit number. So, let us say the actual toys sold was some x y a two digit number. So, that means what will be reported sales? It is going to be y x and as we have seen already difference between the stock shown. For example, he says he found that his stock at the end of the day showed 81 items more than what it actually was. Can I say that 81 should be nothing but difference between these two? And if the stock is showing 81 more, that means, can I say the actual sales should have been higher than the reported sales? For example, actual sales, we took it as 63, if you remember the example, but we reported as 36. So, basically, we are saying that, oh, I have sold 27 items less, thus the stock will, stock will show 27 items more. So, basically, when he says, the stock showed 81 items more, that means the difference between these two, that is x y minus y x should be equal to 81. Let me continue there. x y minus 8 y x can be written as what? This is a two digit number. x is in tens place, y is in units place, y is in tens place, x is in units place. So, when you solve this, you will get 9 into x minus y will be 81. So, hence x minus y is 81 by 9, which is 9. Difference of two digits is 9 only in one case, which is 9 comma 0. Thus, x is 9 and y is 0. So, if x is 9 and y is 0, he is asking us find actual number of toys sold, it is only 90. So, actually there were 90 toys which were sold. Please notice one more thing, he is also talking about price of each toy which was also a two digit number, we did not even make use of that. So, sometimes in your question, you will have some additional data which will not be required at least for answering that particular question. So, please be, be aware of such additional unrequired data, right, so that, so that you can save some time by not moving in that direction. For example, here one more possibility could have been, okay, let us take the price as AB or something, but that is entirely unnecessary. 
I hope we are clear with this. So, this question deals particularly with framing of the equation part. Right? So, today uh, we are done with the video here. Today we have done two things essentially. One is solving and other is framing. I would suggest, I would encourage all of you to practice more of this, right? Because the more you practice, the better you will be with respect to uh, your uh, equation forming and equation solving, right? Uh, please, uh, again, I would like to reiterate, do subscribe, all right? Uh, and uh, click on that notification button to get, whenever a new video is uh, released by us, you would be getting a notification, right? So, that way you will, you can learn even more, right? Here in these videos of around 15, 20 minutes, we will try to cover the basic concepts, all right, and we will try to cover some tricks also as we progress with the course, right. On that note, let me end the session here.